Hey everybody, welcome back to another uh, video. And in this video, we're going to go over a bit more advanced um, input for this one. So we'll go over um, how to read multiple things in one line, but we'll first go over how to handle input failure. And of course, we'll go into actual functions as well, which we'll see how they will differ slightly in C Sharp than in C++. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go over just um, Right here, we read in our radius and height. In this example, we assume that the input that the user will enter will be a proper integer. And I wanna make sure that, oh, not, sorry, not integer, double, a proper decimal double type. So let's say if the user enters a non-valid um, sort of type, then what happens? How do we handle this? Now, the way the code is sort of structured right now, what will happen is it's going to just um, crash. We'll have an exception will get thrown and then we're not going to catch the exception and then nothing will happen so we actually can write our own try and catch block but i mean there are there are moments where it can be nice and i'm not a big fan of try and catch in general i like to always handle my errors as soon as they come up but of course you know i you know i mean try and catch does seem more natural to everybody but in c sharp there is a kind of a function that sort of does that try and catch uh, within that function bounds so Right now, instead of doing this um, sort of uh, line of code like this, what I'm going to do right now is just modify this slightly. So we have another function we can call. So I'm gonna go ahead and just say um, console.readLine again. So I guess I could have uh, put that there. But I'm going to have double dot uh, try parse instead. So it's a little different. So try parse, as you can see here with an editor, you pass in two things. The first will be a string. So a string you want to convert into a double. And the second argument is going to be um, sort of, let's say in this case, your radius. Oh, I was supposed to put out, sorry, out. This is where in C sharp is a little bit different. So you don't see this really in C++, but this out is a way of returning a value into this. So it's basically saying the reference parameter. So out is a reference parameter, which is specifically designed to overwrite the variable name, which is kind of odd in C sharp. Anyway, now we have double dot try parse, and here's your string you want to parse, and you want to read this, or sorry, write this into this variable radius. This returns a Boolean. So I'm going to go ahead and just say something like, um, if not, uh, that so if this returns a false then our program is going to end so I'm going to go ahead and maybe just put in sort of a statement here so console dot write line um, input failure and I'm going to have perhaps a return statement which is going to basically tell main to stop now let's do the same exact thing for our height um, sort of uh, variable Okay, so I just quickly zoomed ahead and just did that. So same idea. We're going to go ahead and we're going to do console.readLine. We're going to try to pass the, the converted uh, string to a double into this variable height. So since height is going to be somewhat of a reference type parameter into this function, you have to use a keyword out, which means we're going to return the result into this reference parameter height. And then it returns a Boolean. So if it returns a true, then height is going to actually get the actual value stored into this variable and a false gets returned or sorry a true gets returned i'm sorry it's true meaning that there was no error so then it will say not true so it will escape this if statement so same idea i can see plus plus with if statements but the only difference here is this way of parsing this um, input okay let's go ahead and now run this and see what happens so i'm going to now again use control f5 to run this in uh, debug mode or sorry not debug but in the regular mode so it's going to build a project okay so I'm going to first just, you know, simply read in proper numbers just to see what happens So 3.5 for radius, 7.2 for the height, and everything just works out because in both cases, it reads the variables into these um, radius and height variables and it computes these um, sort of, you know, the volume and areas like that. So it, it all worked out because in both cases, uh, this parse, uh, try parse function returned a true in both cases. And of course, we use a not operator on the true, which means neither if statement was actually executed. Okay, now let's go ahead and sort of run this where we do get, in fact, um, an error. So I'm again, gonna do control F5 to run this. 
And let's go ahead and I'm just going to maybe try Hello World. Of course, you know, we're going to keep that Hello World thing going right there. And we see here it hits this if statement telling us that, yep, there was an error because what happened was this double dot try parse returned a false value. So that's sort of how we're able to detect an error. Now, of course, if I go ahead and run this again, let's do one more um, sample run over here. If I go ahead and type in the proper number, let's say I put 5.5 .5 over here, but I put in, um, I guess, hello, goodbye. I'm gonna go ahead and run this. And we see we have an input failure because the first input we read in, the 5.5 .5 was successfully uh, parsable or convertible into a double. So we stored it into the radius variable. But the second time we read in another input, then this uh, condition right here was actually false because what happened was we were not able to convert this into a double. So that's sort of um, a very simple way of being able to check for input failure in our program. And one last thing about converting um, strings to a number, there's actually one other, so you can actually can convert to integers as well using the same method. You can say int dot parse. I'll just put this here really fast here in the video. You also can do int dot parse the same way as you do for doubles. You pass in some string and it returns back and int. you also can do a try, try parse as well for integers, same idea. So um, I guess same concepts, we can go ahead and move from that. So the next part I want to talk about is I want to go over um, just sort of like from CS135 or from your C++ course. So sometimes in C++ with command line interface, what you do is you want to read in multiple sort of uh, inputs on one line. And one trick to doing that is going to just be something like one from CS135 or from C++, you would do standard C in and you would use this input operator and you would say um, height and then radius like that. And what this does, if you recall, it's going to just simply read in the first number, store it into this variable height, and the next non-white space uh, character gets read into radius. So you can do something like this in C sharp, but it won't obviously be as simple as in C++, but we'll see it's actually not that much uh, more complicated either. Okay, so in order to accomplish this, we're gonna first um, have to, we're gonna jump uh, sort of a little bit here. We have to create sort of an array of strings. Now I'll go over um, arrays in a little more detail later on, but I guess for now we kind of have no choice but to use um, sort of arrays. So we're gonna have to have an array of strings. So I'm gonna go ahead and just have a string bracket, and I'll just say, uh, I'll, call it a, I'll call it a line for right now. I'm gonna get rid of this. So in C sharp, if you've done C++ arrays, you've always noticed that it was always the type, then the array, and then the bracket came after. Well, again, in C sharp, arrays are sort of objects as well. So string bracket tells us that line is going to be an array of strings. So I don't know, this seems to be, to me at least, a bit more natural because we want to say that this is a, a, um, an array type, not sort of a string, I guess. So it's, it makes more sense, at least to me it's more natural. Okay, so now we have, this is going to store our lines. So remember, we're going to read the input in the following way. We're going to have a number, then a space, then a second number. So we're going to have to take that string and extract it into sort of um, an array of two strings. So let's go ahead and just uh, get that working. So I'm going to first erase all of this. And I'm going to have a console and write to the user. So prompt them once again uh, to enter. So enter... Um, height and radius, I guess. It's, I guess we'll keep it like that. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have line equals, I'm going to say console dot read line dot split by space. So what this does is, so console dot read line, just to recap, it is going to read the entire line from input. And then this, this is going to be a string and then a string split function. So in most languages besides C++, I, I know for sure, like JavaScript, Python, even C Sharp, even Java has a function for strings that, that's a split function. So you want to split the string by space. So it's going to return an array of strings. So if I have, let's say, number 5.5, .5, space 7.5, then 5.5 .5 will be 
um, sort of the first element of that string array, and 7.5 will be the second element. So to do this, I'm going to go ahead and just say, um, I think I'm going to say uh, height equals line index zero. And of course, I'm going to say double dot uh, parse. So I'll use like, just a regular parse this time, like that. Then we'll say um, radius equals double dot parse line, uh, line one. So this is how we do this. So we first read the entire line and we split this by a space stored into the string array. And then the first element will be that first string representing our first number. We're gonna convert that and pass it into our height variable. And then we're gonna take our second string and pass it into our parse function and assign it to radius variable. Let's go ahead and run this. And I'm gonna to try to, as we run it, also discuss what's going on. So let's first control F5 to rebuild this. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, I'll say 5.5 .5 space 7.2, I guess. So this, what happens here is this entire string is, is read as one line. And a split function means I'm going to split this into two strings. I'm going to split the string by space. So space will be my delimiter. So the first string will be right there. Then you see a space. Next string will be, so, so line zero will contain this string. Line one will contain uh, that string. I probably should actually maybe even run this in debugger mode so you can see what happens here. But anyway, I'm going to hit enter. And it sort of works out just fine. Let's go ahead and run this in debug mode so we can see what happens. I'm going to um, maybe put the, um, maybe I'll put over here. I'll, I'll have it sort of stop right around here. There we go. So let's go ahead and hit just F5 right now to run this in debug mode so we can see what's going on. So I'm going to say 5.5 uh, and then 7.2, hit enter. And now, of course, the debugger stops right there. Let's take a look. So line is going to be a string. And line 0 contains 5.5. .5, line 1 contains 7.2 because, remember, we split this by space and line contains that. So we, we pass index 0 into this uh, parse function, which is going to return the number 5.5 .5 into height. And then line index one contains a string 7.2, which is going to take that 7.2, pass it in here, and it's going to return the value, the, the decimal value into the radius uh, variable. And of course, even in debugger mode, you can hover over the variable and it kind of gives you an idea as well. So pretty nice. So it's very nice how debugger works in C sharp. Now I'll hit, um, I'll hit F5 now to kind of continue with this. And that's going to be the end of that. So um, there is sort of a way of being able to read in a line like that, very similar to that C++ or, you know, CS135 way of doing this. So now let's go ahead and talk about uh, functions in C Sharp. Okay, let's first start with a very simple void function just to output contents uh, to the screen. So I'm going to have uh, this portion right here just be in its own function, just so we can kind of just look around and see how C Sharp handles this. So I'm going to, above my int main, just create a function. So I'm gonna say uh, void, I'll call it output, and I'm going to pass in, I guess, two arguments. So I'm gonna pass in a double, um, let's have area, double volume, like that. And of course, I'm going, to, I'm going to take this code and just literally just cut and paste this right there. I don't want to really write the entire thing out. So just consider this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put this code right there. So as we can see, this is going to simply just output everything in our program. I'm going to go ahead and call it right here in main like that. Just say output. I'll pass in area and I'll pass in volume like this. Oops, why did it say output or why did it? Okay, let me just try this again. It's supposed to be just output. Like that. So we see here we have a little bit of an, an issue. And well, why is that? Well, here is something really bizarre. Or not really quite bizarre, but something that's not really too natural if you've taken just CS135. So right now, we have a program called class program. It's going to be our object we're gonna, or our class we're going to create. And output is going to be some member function of this class program. 
So output can just really exist. You can just call output all by itself. It has to be called through an object. So if you take in CS202, this is not too bizarre, but let's just go ahead and just first talk about this. I'm gonna create a variable. So I'm gonna say program. I'm gonna call it maybe just obj object for right now. Then I'll say obj dot output. Initialize. Well, it doesn't have to be initialized really because we're not doing anything here. So anyway, there we go. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. I'm going to hit Control F5. Oh, it's supposed to be build errors. So hold on. Oh, maybe. Oh, I'm supposed. To, oops. I, I know. I mean, sorry. It's a new program like this. There we go. That's my mistake. So. Yeah, I haven't done C sharp in a while. So anyway, that's how we, we first have to declare the object and we have to assign it to a new program. So just like in Java, C sharp, everything is basically a reference. You have to assign it like this. Now, unlike in C++, this is not gonna create any pointers and there is no need to deallocate anything because the garbage collector in C sharp will take care of all that. But anyway, this is how we have to declare an object in our program. So anyway, um, now let's go ahead and run this. So control F5. Again, I'll just say 5.5, 7.2, and everything works out just fine. So this method does work, except, however, um, it seems really silly to really have to create an object of type. So an object means that we're gonna create a variable of type program like this, which is very bizarre, especially if you're kind of new to programming. If you just take 135 only, this might be really weird. And also in general, it's really silly just to have to create an object just to call a function. So there's actually a loophole around this is you can actually say static void. So let me just put this here. So um, in C++ and like in Java and C sharp, static means that this uh, member function is going to not belong to an object, but it belongs to the class. Another word, just to make things simple, it means you don't have to invoke an object just to call this function. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove all of this stuff right here. Get rid of that. And just put some space like this. And just say, output area volume. This is a very much the uh, C++ or CS135 way of doing this. So right here we see that if I just go ahead and call it, make this a static function, I can call like this without having to have to create an object and allocate memory to the object, just call output like you normally would from 135. Let's run this again. So let's say I'm going to say once again 5.5 and then uh, 7.2. And it all works out just fine. So basically, so far, this is sort of the uh, very simple function. So now I'm going to go over, I guess, reference parameters and so forth next, and maybe go over some additional functions. So I, I think what I'll do next is I'm going to. Um, uh, sort of create a function to read in this line of input and have a return to parameters back or have a value or sorry, reference parameters for the height and radius and then create sort of two um, functions that return a value that can be used on the volume and the area. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and once again create a static function once more. And this function, what it's going to do is going to really um, return sort of two values, but I'm going to use... Uh, to reference parameters to do this. So I'm going to say uh, static void uh, read input, I guess I'll call it. And this function will take a few parameters. The first one I'll just have it, will pass in the um, actual message, the prompt, I'll say prompt, it will pass in the actual prompt. Then ref double height and then ref double um, radius. So remember from C++, a reference parameter means that whatever I assign to the variable in this um, function, the updates will be also taken in effect in the calling function as well. So I'm going to go ahead and just take this code here. I'm just going to cut and paste it right over here. I'm going to tab over a bit. I'm going to actually console. I'm going to um, maybe instead of say, I'm going to write out this message. I'm going to write out... Uh, prompt like this. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and copy this as well. I'm gonna cut and paste this right here. Actually, in fact, I could just do this instead. I could just say string like that. Oops. There we are. 
And then back in main, I'm going to then just say uh, read input, pass in, enter um, height and radius, and then ref height, and then ref radius. Oh, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and actually assign these to both be zero first. So I guess here's one difference between um, ref and out. So I'm gonna go ahead and assign them both to be zero. So, okay. So pretty much um, what this does, the same as it does in C++. So ref and height are both going to be reference parameters, which means I'm gonna pass these into this uh, function. And in this function, I'm gonna read that. I'm gonna prompt the user for, the, uh, for a message. I'll prompt them to read in something. I'll read that one line and I'm going to parse and split that line and store it into their height and radius. I'm going to assign them into these two variables. So these are my, again, my formal parameters. If I reassign them, they're going to assign the value into my actual parameters. So back here in my very, back here in main, it's going to assign a new value for the height and radius. So again, just another version of a void function to return multiple things out. Now let's go ahead and just first run this. So I'm going to just um, control F5. I'm going to enter, say, 5.5 and then, I don't know, 7.6. And we see everything is still working fine. Remember, we go over here, we jump up to this part of our program, and we move on from there. Now, there's actually another sort of way of being able to do this. So we have reference parameters, which, you know, is going to allow us to overwrite a a formal parameter in our function body, which will also take effect and update our actual parameters we pass into the function and we call it in main. So what I also could do is I could use out instead of ref. And we'll go over the differences. There's not much of a big difference, but we'll go over differences between out and ref. Now for out, I actually don't need to um, initialize these variables. I, I'll put out over here as well. So the difference between out and ref is I don't have to initialize these variables in main. So notice how uh, height and radius, I just uh, declared them, but I didn't actually initialize with some default value. So radius and height could be zero, or it could be some random sort of number. But without, it doesn't need to initialize it because out, we're expecting to actually overwrite these variables. Let's go ahead and just control F5 once again. Just simply, um, let me get the same, I, I'll, I'll trust the calculations that does in fact work. So pretty much um, everything is just fine. So the real difference between out and ref is the following. So for an out statement, we don't have to initialize a variable. However, if it's an out, if I were to sort of erase these lines of code, we get an error because this function, we have these two out uh, parameters. And if you have an out parameter, we must overwrite the value in this function body. Now, if I were to make these both um, ref for reference instead, and I'll update these to be ref also to be consistent. And I have to, of course, for reference, I have to initialize the variables to, to a certain default value or else it will cause an issue. But reference parameters, we don't need to overwrite the values in the function body themselves. If you want to, we can, but we have the option not to. For out, we must overwrite the variable in this function body. But for out, we don't have to initialize it because we're going to overwrite them anyway within the function body. Reference parameters has to be, has to be initialized as something and does not have to be updated. Out does not have to be initialized, but it must output something. So that's really different between ref and out. So anyway, uh, there's that. So again, uh, I'm not gonna be really too strict on how you have to write your programs for your labs, but this is again, just me going over some differences I don't believe in C++, at least maybe in C++, the newer versions maybe has this, but I know the old fashioned C++ uh, that you learn in this school, uh, you don't really do this. So you don't have an out and ref, you use the ampersand symbol to denote a reference parameter. 
Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and just have a one more last function that's going to just be returning a bunch of, it's going to be returning sort of, or passing in values, I'm sorry, and it's going to return some value back, so for our volume and area uh, sort of calculations right here below. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, use our kind of our C-sharp type syntax, but a C++ way of being able to return or be able to calculate the volume and the area. We'll have two separate functions uh, to do this. So one function will be for the volume, one will be for the area. So let's go ahead and just uh, set up our function, I guess, heading right here. So again, it'll be a static function, so you have to create an object. So static uh, double, I'll just call it get uh, volume. I'll just do it like this. And into this uh, function, we're passing in really two arguments. You're going to pass in the radius and the height. So I'm going to say double radius, double height, like that. And I'm going to, in this uh, sort of, I guess, function call, I'm going to just, um, you know, create a variable right here. Say so double, and I'll call this volume, and then volume equals, I'm just going to just cut and paste this portion of my code. So I'm going to rewrite all of that. And then of course, return volume at the very end. And now let's go ahead and do this um, for our area function as well. Again, I'm going to say static double get area. And I'm going to say double radius, I think you need radius and height again, so double radius, double height. So also in C sharp, like C++, um, all the parameters are always passed by value unless you use a ref or out in front of it, otherwise it will be passed by value. So just to make sure I get that out of the way as well. I'm going to create a variable here called double area, and area equals, I'm just going to just simply uh, take this code here and just cut and paste it. I'm going to then say return area. And of course, back in main, I'm going to say volume dot get volume pass in the uh, radius and height and pass in and say get um, area pass in the radius and height. So um, pretty trivial if you've done C++. All we're doing is we call the function get volume. We're going to pass these values into this uh, parameters list. And we're going to simply run this, run this code right there, compute the volume right there, return this value, which gets returned into this volume uh, variable back in main. And the same idea for the area. So again, just a um, little recap from C++. Let's go ahead and just control F5 to run this and just make sure it does work. I'll trust that the calculations are just going to work correctly. So again, I'll say 5.5 and I'll say, I'll say 10.2. Let's try that. And I'm going to go ahead and trust that these um, are all correct. Everything is working out just fine. So this is kind of our basic way of doing input like this or, or calling a function like this. So let's go ahead and do sort of an alternative type way of being able to maybe return two values from one function back to main rather than having two separate functions that returns one value for each one and we call it twice in our main. There's actually another kind of feature which is similar to how you can do this sort of in Python or those uh, cooler, newer languages. You can do it like that in C++ as well. Let's go ahead and get into that. Um, let's, let's talk about how we can do it in that way. So in C Sharp, you can actually return um, a tuple, or you can return sort of, I guess a tuple would be like a list of uh, data. So in C++, what we've done, we always return, if you had a, you know, a non-void function, like it's a double returning, it returns only one single value and that's it. But with C Sharp, we have the feature of returning multiple values back. So the way we do the syntax for it, let's say I want to create a function that's going to pass in the radius and height and it returns back both the area and the volume without using, I mean, of course I could have a void function and have like an out for, you know, I could have an out for volume, out for um, area, and sort of calculate here and sort of store these two into these two uh, reference type parameters. But, you know, that works. Let's, you know, try an alternative way as well. So I'm going to say static, and then double, double like this. So we're going to return a tuple. 
and this tuple will contain two doubles. I just say get, uh, I'm gonna call it get results. I'm gonna have, maybe I'll pass in the uh, radius. So double uh, radius, and double um, height like that. Of course, it's still giving us a little issue here because we're not returning anything. So it's expecting us to return some value back, but we will return in a second. So I guess we'll have return the volume and then the area. So I'm going to go ahead and just make things uh, simple. I'm going to just take these and copy. So copy this over here. I'm also going to copy the area code as well. I think I'll make it a little bit nicer. So I'm going to actually maybe put this double area above so it's a bit more presentable. So it was important to have very nice looking code. It's always important. So there we are. So we go ahead in this one function, create a double area and volume. And we're going to go ahead and compute them using our regular formulas. And I'm going to have return a volume first. So I'm going to go ahead and just say return. Um, volume and area like that. So it returns sort of these two values. So going back to me, I'm going to now call the get volume and get area, which I did above and it's just gonna, I'll keep these in my code, but I'm gonna get rid of, I'm not gonna call them in main. I'm gonna go ahead and do the following. So here's another uh, sort of difference from CS135. I'm gonna go ahead and sort of put an extra line like this. Okay, good. I'm gonna say um, var, results equals get results and I believe you pass in the radius uh, and then the height so in C++ 11 there's actually this thing called auto where you can say auto and then a variable name and what happens is it's going to define the value based on what is what it's assigned so I say let's say over here for example if I were to do something like uh, var, and I'll just call this maybe just s equals hello, then s is going to be a string variable. If I go ahead and say var x equals say 10, then x is going to be an integer. So based on what I'm assigning to it, it's going to set the type of s and x like that. So in this case, same idea, results is going to be a tuple uh, type. So we're going to take the results, store it into this var results, and I'm going to go ahead and I don't have to, I guess I'll, 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 be, I'll be concise. So I'm gonna go ahead and so it returns the volume first, I believe, from looking at my return here. So I'm gonna say volume equals results dot item one, and then area is equal results dot item two. So this is, I guess, sort of an alternative way of doing this. So basically what happens is we return this tuple back into results and results that item one will be that first tuple, I guess you can say, and it will take that and store it into this variable volume defined locally in main. And then item two, which is the second element in our tuple, which is this element, will be assigned to the area. And of course now volume area both have some value associated with them. I pass these into this output function, which will output the results. So let's go ahead and try this out. So I'm going to go ahead and just type in some, I say I'll try 5.5 and 7.6. Just go with these default values again. And I, I'm going to go ahead and believe that a compiler or this language did correctly compute everything. So this was sort of our, our, our video that went over just um, some extra inputs and sort of using functions in C sharp. Hopefully this video did sort of um, give you a little bit of a scope in C sharp and you kind of saw a little bit of syntax differences in C sharp and C++. But once again, you actually can, you know, write all your code like you would in C++ and then do it like that in C sharp. So for example, this was more of a C sharp way of doing this sort of this get results tuple function. But of course, if you want to use your standard 135 style where you have like a returning function, like a double get volume, double get area, that also works. I'm just sort of showing it that we have, you know, other options in C sharp. So anyway, I guess that's it for this video. So take care, stay safe, and until next time.